Hello, my name is Kelly Chin, and this is Amisha Tutwiler, and we are first year students at the University of Toledo College of Medicine. Today, we are going to be talking about the student collective that we formed this year to further anti-racist education amongst our peers. The White Coats for Black Lives Racial Dialogue Collective is a faculty approved anti-racist discussion group at the University of Toledo College of Medicine and Life Sciences that we started during the fall of 2020. We began this collective seeking to celebrate, uplift, and amplify the voices of Black people and those of the African diaspora while facilitating anti-racist growth and education for future physicians. We hope to humanize the Black experience in the United States and in healthcare settings to create more compassionate and informed providers. Through group discussion and self-exploration, we have supported and encouraged our fellow members to mitigate their own biases, self-educate about the role of racism in healthcare, and combat racism in the medical field and beyond. Our goal is to graduate as physicians who not only have experience in anti-racist work, but also recognize the importance of continuing our education anti-racism through the remainder of our training and career. As you can see, we have been able to cover a wide range of topics. These are some of the themes that we have explored. While many topics tie back to healthcare, we take a holistic approach to anti-racist discussion and work to include all aspects without limiting ourselves to medicine. This is a selection of our syllabus that includes readings from different discussions. In these examples alone, we have books, poetry, academic and journalistic articles, a podcast, and a movie. In addition to what Kelly mentioned about engaging students with various discussion topics, media, and genres, we also delve into the importance of visual engagement. The top two photos are from our beginning discussions, which you can see are less visually engaging than our bottom three photos. We also altered our question format to ask multiple questions around the same topic to provoke more thought. We noticed that this is a method that kept students better engaged. In addition, you can see that our questions are developed to create a personal level of introspection and self-analysis that has not been required of medical students thus far. Some of the questions above are, what does it mean to be internally colonized and how are you internally colonized? And what responsibilities do students have in the use of BMI, although it is not a scientifically informed metric about healthy bodies? In order to keep students engaged over long periods of time, we also found it to be important to cultivate an appropriate environment. We did this through establishing group norms, creating trigger indicators, and by centering, protecting, and prioritizing minority voices. It was immediately established that this space may not always feel comfortable. However, we are here to listen, learn, and reflect. We wanted to create something that will be accessible to all those people who are not able to engage for what, whatever reason. So we created a newsletter and this newsletter has anti-racist and culturally re relevant education. Each month we send it to our 96 total subscribers and White Coat for Black Lives members. Thus far, we have been averaging 150 opens per newsletter and you can subscribe to our newsletter through the link in our Instagram bio. Each news newsletter lists the re readings and relevant material for that month and includes the discussion questions from the discussion of that month. In addition to benefiting the members who attended, this has been an opportunity for the facilitators and newsletter editors to grow unique leadership skills that are listed on this slide. Many medical students do not know how to approach these topics and do not have a formal introduction on how to ta tackle anti-racism. Because of this, we opened the committee up for more facilitator and membership engagement positions to give others the opportunity to learn in this capacity. As facilitators, we have learned how to engage medical students by constructing discussions around anecdotal and evidence-based materials in a variety of formats. As editors of the newsletter, they have learned how to connect the collective's discussions to current events in order to create engaging product, product tailored to medical students. Our students have stated that they have benefited from having the collective in order to actively reflect on their biases, also emphasizing how having the space allows for them to reflect more deeply than if they were to do it by themselves. Students have also come to learn that unlearning some of the things that we are taught takes time, effort, and patience because it's a gradual process, which I think is extremely important to recognize. This collective has offered students the opportunity to expand their knowledge about systemic racism and anti-racism during their medical education. We, the facilitators, have gained valuable leadership and collaboration skills within the context of anti-racism that we will continue to build throughout the rest of our training. In the future, we desire to develop a self-guided anti-racism crash course for new members, create an elective course on the history and solutions to systemic inequities in medicine, 
educate students about actionable steps and using privilege to create change and expanding our current list of topics. Thank you for listening to our presentation.